he's gonna take you back to the past To play the shitty games that suck ass He'd rather have a buffalo Take a diarrhea dump in his ear He'd rather eat the rotten asshole Of a roadkill skunk It's hard to believe it's been two years since I started working on At the Ends of Eras. It feels like five. But it's true. March 11th, 2022, I started my first ever Twitch stream with unusable audio from the wrong microphone, and the rest is history. More than 300 streams and five devlogs later, I figured I should take some time to reflect. I only have two regrets at this point in development. My first regret is uh, making this game instead of something completely different. At the Ends of Eras originally started as a month-long game jam to make Jack 4, sequel to Jack 3, the 11th best game released November 2004. It was a packed month. At no point did I plan to make the game that exists now, and it shows. Why are rolling, crouching, and climbing tied to the same button? Because climbing was originally a bug with crouching that I liked enough to keep around, and all the other buttons are being used now. What inspired the story with the memory scanning AI? I mentioned it was a dream in the first devlog, but I didn't mention I had the dream several years prior and decided to throw it in here on a whim, despite knowing full well at the time that I wouldn't be able to execute on it by the deadline, which, to reiterate, was April 2022. Also, I'm pretty sure the dream was based on an episode of Steven Universe, but I can't remember if I had the dream before or after watching it. Why do you collect procedurally generated coats that have no gameplay function? Because it was a parody of gear in modern open world games, down to copying the Borderlands rarity tiers. The rarer the coat, the uglier it is. I would hate to remove it now, since collecting coats is fun, but I'd hate to add any sort of gameplay function and lose the irony. Why does the game take place in an Islamic emirate with an impressive government? Well, when I modeled the player character, Jackie, I realized her chest armor was too vague, and I quickly sketched the first thing that came to mind, a fashionable double-breasted coat. Instead of making, say, a second sketch to make the design cohesive with my original plans, I went with this. This is all of the concept art for the character before modeling her. Then, seeing her running around the desert reminded me of the Anglo-Afghan War, the great game, the good old days before the, shall we say, precipitous decline of the British Empire into global irrelevance and the Middle East into endless war. Without weighing over any other ideas, I decided to run with that as the setting, and I've kept running further and further. Did you know the Taliban has an official website? Did you know I'm on a government watch list? But don't worry, the hijab you have to wear in the major cities does match your coat. You see what I mean? This game was designed by Brownian Motion. Every major decision was either completely arbitrary or an attempt to work with one of those arbitrary decisions. Now it's a giant game o gumbo and it's just... irreconcilable. Even in the best case, where I make everything I've planned and other people can comprehend it, it'll probably be too eclectic and dissonant for most people. In my off time, I brainstormed 130 different side quest ideas. Here's a sample. You learn to cook local food. You learn what a cell phone is. You aren't allowed in the government lab because you're a woman. The giant snail that instantly kills you if you touch it. It very slowly follows you and dramatic music plays when it's near. The fall of rationalism in favor of empiricism is proof of the absence of God. You help a woman escape the country. Materialism implies that human perception is truth. Monkey Mouse. And that's just from that one brainstorming session. I didn't even mention Jackie's traumatic childhood as a literal red-headed stepchild or the cocaine that makes you psychic, inspired by a dream where my dad melted cocaine in a spoon and poured it in his eye. He didn't even get high from it, it just hurt. And I'm pretty sure cocaine doesn't melt, very unrealistic. I can't find a middle ground between all the serious things the game's plot and setting imply and the humor I gravitate toward. I don't want important parts of the game to be undermined by jokes, but the default way I make things interesting is by making them funny. What the fuck else do I do? Have everybody speak in verse? Throw in my incomprehensible techno-philosophy? 
If you don't behave yourself, I'll add Immanuel Kant to the game to explain the parallels between empiricism and machine learning, you little punk. It's not just the tonal dissonance. The platforming and adventure game style puzzles don't gel together either, so I'm effectively making two separate games. You're either walking and talking to investigate and solve problems, or you're jumping and climbing around abstract levels. Development is like squeezing blood from a stone to make lemonade. Sure, it'd be impressive if I can actually pull all these contradictory elements together into something that feels complete, but most people prefer lemonade from lemons. Of all the stories I've had in my head for years, of all the game ideas I can imagine clearly in my mind, of everything I've ever wanted to make, I instead made a game effectively generated at random. I should have stuck with Kitty Gets a Burger. Now that was a video game that could have existed. However, Kitty was struck by a 2018 Ford F-150 and is currently in purgatory. I think these feelings are largely just the siren song of doing something else. Since starting work on At the Ends of Eras, I've prototyped more than 20 other game projects, and I finally started on my Algol 60 to WebAssembly compiler. At long last, Algol in the browser. I've started a lot of things, but it's not like I would have stuck with them before this. This game is by far the longest project I've ever worked on, and it's mostly because I'm streaming it. Now that I'm a hotshot affiliate streamer, I've got to do my best for my paying subscribers. I could go back to the drawing board, decide which 20% of the game would work together and scrap everything else, but uh, I'm just going to stick with my current plans. They say murder your darlings, but what if I just murdered you? What if, huh? I'm already on the path to complete the main story content, which hopefully means the game will exist at some point. I have everything outlined, it's just a matter of making all the stuff and making it good, which uh, is taking longer than I expected, as I should have expected. I wanted to have the main story written by this video, but I've realized I can't just write a script without seeing it, especially with the game's dialogue being so mechanics heavy. I'm only productive if I write a bit, make the stuff, and see where to go from there. If I complete everything on schedule, the first proper draft of the story will be done in early 2025, the operating phrase being first draft. That's just the time it takes to make these quests functional and vaguely gesture toward interesting ideas. Then I have to go over them and make it all fit together, once I actually know what they're fitting together into. Hopefully that doesn't take as long, but it certainly could with things like art and music taking a long time. And I only just now created that schedule as I write this devlog because I realized I've been working on the same quest for like two months. This room, as simple as it looks, is going to be stuck in my mind forever because I had to do a full rewrite of the game's movement code to make ledge jumping from moving platforms somewhat consistent. Despite saying all this, I don't actually regret making the game. I've come to accept the possibility that it'll be a complete disaster. Maybe I won't be able to rectify its contradictions, or I'll fail to convey anything interesting, or the game will have really bad stuttering because I made the terrain chunks too big early in development. It's not something I ever would have designed with foresight, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's pushed my abilities as a developer more than anything I've ever made, and I can picture a version of the game that's good, and that picture's been getting clearer as I work. Hopefully, once it comes time to release the game, that's the picture other people will see. I'll certainly hope so. Oh, and my second regret is making Jackie's boobs too small. Thanks again for watching. It's been several months since my last devlog, and that's because I'm in the thick of making the game's content. Hopefully I can find more things to talk about, but even this devlog is sort of just reiterating ideas I've already had. I've been going back through the old streams to add chapters, and I found as early as day 8 I was talking about how the project had completely gone off the rails. If anything, I'm consistent. But if you want to keep up with development, I'm still streaming on Twitch. I'm up to stream 300 and like, probably like 11 by the time this comes out. Very cool. Very exciting. Uh, I've also been trying to post daily summaries of the streams on Discord, but uh, I uh, don't usually. <laughs>